Hi, my name is Andrew Prokop. I was recently at Avaya Engage, where I presented a breakout on bot building basics. A number of people asked me to record it, so without further ado, here it is. So let's get started. Um, currently, when we want to find the answer to something, I know that when I want to find the answer to something, I go to a search engine like Google or DuckDuckGo or even Bing, and I come up with some sort of a question. Now I take that question and I distill it down to a few keywords. Let's say I'm looking for a particular recipe that uses black beans and quinoa. I'm going to um, you know, put in my search engine, black beans, quinoa recipe, send that off. Um, the search engine, let's say it's Google, is going to go through its you know list of all the things it knows about you know black bean recipes it's going to come up with a big long list of links and it's going to send it back to me and then me i'm going to go through and read those links and decide which ones make sense click on one maybe two maybe three um, so i'm left with the job of figuring out how to make sense of all this information that the search engine came back to me that's the way we do things without artificial intelligence. So let's add artificial intelligence into the mix. So I ask a natural language question. So I'm looking for a recipe with black beans and quinoa. It understands the question. The natural language system or expert system understands the question, produces possible answers internally with its evidence, analyzes the evidence, computes the competence. Um, in a perfect world, it knows who I am, and knows the kinds of things that I want to see. It'll know that, oh, I'm looking for a vegetarian recipe, and that will deliver the response along with the evidence and the components, and then I'll have my recipe for black beans and quinoa that suits me. So again, as opposed to having to wade through all of these various recipes, the expert system using artificial intelligence and natural language processing determines what's best for me and returns it. And this is really kind of the basic of basics of what I'm going to talk about with bots here. So if we look at the bot evolution, we start at the far left and we see the basic uh, FAQ bot. And I built a number of these. I've done some prototypes for different folks. Uh, I did one for a, a county in Florida that was looking for some kind of a 311 information system for their county beaches. So I built it um, uh, using um, a Google Home. And so you can actually start the application, ask questions about different beaches and parking passes and red tide, con red tide conditions, and it returns an answer back. Not a whole lot of computation, an FAQ system. I've also gone to the far right and built close to a personal concierge. A system that is based on um, machine learning, it's more personalized, it's proactive, um, a proactive um, bot system anticipates what you're looking for. Um, perhaps, um, again, let's go back to the recipe example. And, you know, I asked about uh, uh, various recipes and um, the bot could come back to me, you know, asynchronously and say, hey, Andrew, are you looking for a great recipe tonight? I just uncovered this. So we get everything for basic FAQ up to personal concierge. The next several slides, I want to talk about the fundamentals of artificial intelligence and bot building. These apply to any platform, and these apply to uh, bots, of the, the tiniest bots to the most complicated bots. So it begins with the intent. And the intent is the intention of an utterance. Other, either an utterance is either spoken or typed speech. So a simple example, are you open today? The intent from that could be store hours. There are many different ways that you can ask, are you open today? And they will all distill down to store hours. The next big concept is the entity. Think of the entity as a modifier of an intent. So it's information that is relative and often essential to an intent. So are you open today? Going back to our first example, are you open can go to store hours. Today is very specific because are you open today is different than are you open tomorrow? Are you open on Saturday? Are you open Thanksgiving day? So the intent can still be store hours, but now I have a day of week entity. The next example, I build a trouble ticket system. And one of the things I can do is assign tickets. So assign ticket one, two, three, four, five, six, 
to Andrew Prokop. So here I can have an intent of, it could be called a signed ticket. And I have two entities. One is the ticket number, and the second is the assignee. And then there's the dialogue. This is the response to the intent. So first one, are you open today? We are open from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. The response can be a simple response in that it's just repeated back, you know, um, hard-coded response. It could be a much more complicated response. It goes to some back-end system to determine how to respond to this request. Next big concept is context. Context is a variable, and it's really an object variable that contains information used by the dialogues, integrations, and other intents. For instance, let's say I build a banking application. And one of the things you can do with the banking application is ask, what's my checking account balance? Well, it doesn't make any sense to ask what my checking account balance is if the bot doesn't know who I am. So if I start the bot up and I say, what's my checking account balance? It should say something, well, what's your account number? I enter my account number, and then it could say, I've just sent a text message with a code to your cell phone on file. Please enter that code. You enter the code, it now authenticates you. Now you can ask, what is my checking account balance? So what happened in one intent flow is appropriate to another intent flow. Intent flow. So that information, the context, can move between various aspects of the bot. It can also move into the fulfillment. Fulfillment are the back-end services that provide data to your bot for processing and for dialogues. They could be databases, web services, cloud servers. Uh, in this presentation, I'll show you how to use Firebase. Uh, it could be a CRM system. So you may need to pass context down to some fulfillment engine. It can pass new context back or modified context. So fulfillment engine is outside of the scope of the bot building tool. I need to do some work. And it's not as simple as simply repeating an answer back. You know, hard coding, you know, when are you open? We're open Monday through Friday. Um, do you sell hats? Yes, I sell hats. Uh, Fulfillment Engine does deeper work, and I'll show you that as we go along. And the last big concept is integration. And the integration is how do you talk to the bot? Are you talking through web chat, smart speaker like Google Home or Amazon Alexa? Are you making a phone call? Are you using Twitter into the bot? Are you using SMS text into the bot? Uh, Facebook Messenger, Teams applications like Microsoft Teams, Avaya Spaces, WebEx Teams. So how do you get information into the bot and how do you get information from the bot back to the user? A well-written bot can run on perhaps all of these interfaces without making substantial changes to the bot. Now, the data that gets returned or rendered um, could be um, different. So you can have, uh, in a sense, tags to say, if I'm going to... Um, uh, SMS text, I can return an image because you can text images back and forth, but it doesn't make any sense to send an image to a smart speaker. So you can have the, the core processing uh, all be the same, but yet differences on the interfaces for the integration. So those are the six big concepts. Now, there are a lot of different bot platforms. Um, I've used IBM Assistant, that's in the IBM Watson platform, uh, Google Dialogflow, which is what the bulk of this presentation will be about. I've used Amazon Lex, uh, Microsoft, uh, Core AI, a very powerful platform. Uh, Facebook even has their own called wit.ai. They can all be used to build bots in a very similar manner. This happens to be Google Dialogflow. Notice intents, entities, fulfillment integrations. They use the same terminology I use. You don't have to use that terminology, but I will tell you every bot building tool under the covers is doing similar things if they even if they don't call it an intent or they don't call it fulfillment. This is IBM Watson or IBM Watson Assistant. Notice again, intents, entities, dialogue. They don't mention fulfillment and integration, but they have those concepts as well. Okay, so let's go into uh, actually building a bot. And so I'm going to you know, identify what the bot is, uh, create the intents, gonna train the intents, uh, restrain them, and that's my um, my interesting or fun, fancy way of saying build the integration. So again, this presentation was given at an, by Engage, and for the presentation, I built a bot for Engage. It was my Engage bot, um, and it was a very simple bot. Uh, most of it was FAQ, so when is Engage, where is Engage, how do I register, but I did some fulfillment as well. 
and I also do some context and you'll see that and some entities. Um, the the sign up for text updates is a little bit more complicated and I'll see and I'll show you how that that one works and why it's a little more complicated. Okay, let's start with um, Dialogflow. So go to Dialogflow.com. Um, you can sign up for free, create a developer account, um, and it won't you don't have to pay anything for this and you can build bots. If you don't have uh, a Gmail address, I highly recommend that you do have a Gmail address. It works really well when we get into some of the Google integrations like Google Home and Google Assistant. Uh, I, of course, have an account. So, And once you have an account, then you would simply just go to console. So the first thing you do is you need to create a new agent. So there's a little uh, on the main screen. You go and create an agent. In this case, I created my Engage 2020 bot. Um, and then I clicked on the little plus sign next to Intents, and I created the location intent. At this point, I haven't programmed anything. I have, a, I have an agent or a bot, Engage 2020, and I have one intent that doesn't do anything. So I need to do things, some things. So for instance, I need to do training phrases. So those are the phrases that are used to, so that this, so that Dialogflow, Google knows, um, you know, what it entails a location. Next, I add those phrases. So I open up the training phrases area. And uh, again, this is location. So it's, what is the address of the convention center? Where is the conference? Where is Engage 2020? Now, I don't need to put every single way somebody would ask this question. A powerful platform like Google will start to understand what I'm doing and in a sense, kind of, it will learn from this process. So, um, so I won't have to ask these three questions to get the the intent location. It will understand, it get the idea of what I'm trying to do, and then go, you know, go from there. If you find that it's going to the wrong intent or not going to your intent, you may want to go back and add some more training phases to make it a little more precise. And then at the end, I need to create a dialogue. Uh, in Google language, they call this a response. And so I put in, in this case, it's a hard-coded response. Somebody asks, where is the conference or where is Engage? And it will say, well, Engage 2020 is being held, blah, blah, blah. You can put in multiple responses and have those responses returned in various different ways. One of the easiest things to do is just have Google round robin through them. The reason why you might want to have more than one response to the same intent is that you want your bot to sound more human-like. You don't want it to sound like a robot that it just repeats the same things over and over again for the same kind of question. So I can put in multiple multiple uh, dialogues or multiple responses to have it a little more interesting. And this will be this will become more apparent as we get into things like uh, default responses and things like that. So let's do the, this is the easy peasy case. So what we do is we create an intent and then we build dialogues so we build, you know, the responses and I, we create the intent and train the intent, obviously, as well, build the dialogues. In this case, again, I mentioned you can have more than one and I put more than one. I put two responses in. And then repeat this for all of the FAQ type things. So um, like in, in my bot, uh, some of the FAQs are like when is intent and where do I go to register? Dialogflow has a really nice ability to test your bots as you're building them. So if you go to the testing portion, and it's right there on the main screen, you can just type in your, your phrase, your utterance. In this case, I typed in, where is engage? And it came back with the first answer. Immediately, I typed in, where is engage again? And it came back with the second answer. So it's just a round robin process through that. You can set that up in other ways as well, but this is the simplest way to do it. So, Again, you keep doing this with my engage bot. I added more things. I added again, um, I started with location, then I could add when and register. But let's say I want to get a little more interesting. Let's sign up for text messages. Okay. So this is a little more of an interesting concept because I'm not just giving, I'm just saying, tell me something that's always the same. Uh, everybody's cell phone differs, and I have to do something with that cell phone. So let's look at that. So this is the text messages intent. I start to train it and I train it with here two phrases, send text updates, and then also send text updates to, and I put in a phone number. Well, that phone number notice how it's highlighted. And that's because down in the actions and parameters area, I created an entity for this. 
for this um, intent. And I called it phone number. And the entity that I used was a standard Google built-in entities, uh, sys.phone-number. There are a lot of built-in entities, and you're going to see that as we go along um, in the, when I get to the entity section. And you can build your own entities as well, but I used one of the built-ins. So note, again, notice that there's send text updates and send text type updates to a number. And notice how I click required down there on the, um, the entity that I built. This means if I don't see a phone number, then I'm going to ask for a phone number. And that's under the prompt section. See the word prompts there? And so I build out a prompt which says, please tell me your cell phone number. If I give it the cell phone number, it won't ask because it will know, the, it will see the number there and it will put it into the variable dollar sign phone number. If I don't give it a telephone number, it will ask me the, for, the, for the phone number and then I will put that into the phone number section. Okay. So text message. Text message intent, what have we done so far? Well, we defined the intent, created training phrases, identified uh, an entity, the phone number, I set the entity as required, and I created an entity prompt. What's missing? Well, what's missing is the dialogue. Um, plus, what do we do with that telephone number? I mean, it's not just enough to get a phone number, you have to do something with it. And then you probably want some sort of response back to the person that says, okay, you have been registered for text updates. Uh, put that phone number into a database. Uh, that database will then be queried by a second application that will then go through and send the updates, you know, whatever messages you want to text out. This isn't the bot now, this is another application that's using the data created by the bot. So how do we do that? Well, we go into fulfillment. So for this intent, I will turn on, at the very bottom, enable web, webhook call for this intent. Now, there's two ways of doing that. Uh, there's enable webhook for the intent and enable webhook call for slot filling. I'm not going to deal with slot filling. It's a little more of an advanced topic. But right now, we click on uh, webhook for the intent, which means that before this intent can complete, it's going to do something. And that something is it's going to go to some outside service, something outside of Dialogflow. The first way you can do that is you can do that with a true webhook, which is an application that runs on a server somewhere else that gets a REST post. The REST post will have a JSON structure that defines what is happening. It will give the intent, any entities, the, the utterance. It will give any context that comes along with this intent processing. Um, I've done a lot of these. Uh, I have a server that I ha that runs IBM WebSphere, and I write my intent, I write my uh, webhooks in Java. You'll see that in just a second. Uh, the other way to do this is with the inline editor that Google provides, and it really gives you a little Firebase chunk to write your code. So Firebase is a platform that you can write um, on a Google server, and you write these applications in Node.js. And I've done a number of those, and you're going to see some of that in just a bit. So if I am going to do the, the webhook webhook, then I have to have a server somewhere and I have to address it with a URL. Uh, there may be some basic auth authentication, any headers. And then again, it's going to send the JSON structure that Google defines. And then you return a JSON structure uh, with, that will contain the dialogue and any context and any uh, other information might come back. So again, I've done a number of these things and it's kind of ugly stuff, but I, uh, written in Java. Uh, again, I'm running on an IBM WebSphere uh, server and I get the JSON, I parse the JSON, I do various things with it and return my JSON structure um, with the answer. Um, for this example, I did it in Firebase. And I'm not gonna go through all of the Node.js uh, but uh, what happens is my function gets, uh, re you know, when the text uh, entity gets uh, hit, then I uh, will actually pull the uh, phone number out, which comes in the JSON structure into the uh, Node.js, and I could pull it out with agent.parameters.phone number, and phone number was the variable that I created. And then I send this off to this thing called RESTDB API. And it's, um, I'm using RESTDB, which is a cloud-based uh, NoSQL database, and I'm putting the phone number into that uh, database and, you know, deep in the weeds, which I'm not showing you, you know, checking for uh, duplicates and things like that. So anyway, you can do that there in, um, in Firebase. A little something that I wear the hard way, 
if you're going to call REST services from Firebase, you need to sign up for one of the fee plans um, from Google. Uh, it automatically comes with the Spark plan, which is completely free, but it doesn't allow you to do web services. You can pay for the Flame plan, which you pay so much per month. Uh, I always sign up for the Blaze plan, which is pay as you go. And the pay as you go, the um, limits are so incredibly high that I've never actually hit one. So everything I do is free on um, Firebase, with even with my web services. Um, because I never do generate enough traffic. Uh, if you were to go into production, you would probably go to some other model. Um, but for just developing simple bots, go with Blaze. It'll be free, even though, um, again, you won't hit the limit. So it'll be free for all extents and purposes. Here's another example of, a, uh, of an intent here. This is the goodbye intent. So I built the goodbye intent and I trained it with things like, I'll see you later. And thanks a lot. Thanks for all your help and whatever you might want to do to end the session. And then it gives an answer. And then I set this intent as the end of conversation. This is appropriate when you have a bot that comes into play on something like a smart speaker. And when you're done, you want the bot to go away. So you can invoke the bot and say, start this um, service. Uh, I think in Alexa, they'll call it a skill. And then you can make it go away. And I'll give you an example of this at the end. So this is my goodbye um, intent. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about entities. I gave you a, a real brief example. There are a whole bunch of system entities. And I use these for all sorts of things. Uh, let's say that you're building some sort of flight tracker system. Um, you'll see down there, second from the bottom, there's a built-in uh, flight number entity that understands how flight numbers are coded. Um, there's their time period um, uh, entities and their date period entities. So you don't have to figure out what does a date look like? Google has already done that for you. And the, the same thing occurs with the other platforms. They've already figured these things out for you. You just have to say that this thing I'm looking for is, is of this type. You can create your own. And so for this bot, I created a clothing entity. So let's say that you want to be able to have the user ask for engage clothing. And so I came up with a whole bunch of things and I just named them all down there. These are all the different things that go into the clothing entity. It also accepts synonyms. For example, like hat, you could also you can have hat or you could have cap or, you know, whatever, chapeau, um, which would all come down to hat. So you can have different ways of asking for the same thing. So how would I use that? Well, I could put that into an, an intent called clothing. And if I assign this uh, entity down here, clothing see near the bottom as one of my action parameters, then I can say, if I type, I would like to buy an engage hat, it automatically recognizes that this is one of my, uh, the, the, ent ent the entity that I built. Um, and then it's interesting because that will get passed down to my user or my fulfillment engine. Um, and so if I need to do something like, you know, I need, I, I know they're trying to buy something, but what are they trying to buy? And I can also have sizes and, you know, this is a women's shirt, a men's shirt, things like that. You could build all those things into entities. Very, very powerful. Again, like modification of an intent. Next big topic is context. Okay. Context is an object variable. So it contains data. It exists as both input to and output from intent processing. So an intent can have an input context or input contexts, and it can have an output context or output contexts. It can modify, you can modify contexts as you move along. You can add things from them. You can subtract things from them. Contexts can have a lifetime, which means they don't have to exist forever. And I'll see, you'll see that in just an example, in an example coming up. And they could be created and or manipulated by fulfillment. So again, when it comes down to your fulfillment engine. Here's an example. So I have a color intent. And I built an output context called color context. Notice that little two there. That's the lifespan of this context. So it will be used once it's accessed two times, it will disappear. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So now I train my color intent. Uh, what is your favorite color? Um, and then I build a parameter in there and, uh, I call it uh, favorite color. Uh, I said it's a, a, a cis color, uh, type value. And I overwrote, uh, the initial, I overwrote it or added a value called a via red. 
And if you look at the bottom, my favorite color is color context. So it's pulling it from the context dot favorite color. So at the, the text response down there at the bottom doesn't say a via red, it's pulling it from the context. So I'm adding it to the context with this intent and then I'm going to pull it. So let's go a little bit deeper. Let's build a second intent called color again. And color again takes as input context. So color was output context. Now it's input context. So it's bringing this into color again. And it's going to say, it's, it's invoked with tell me again. So when you say tell me again, this invokes this intent if color context exists, which means that somebody had to have asked, what is your favorite color? And once they ask that, if you say, tell me again, then this intent will say, okay, I see the tell me again. Okay, quick, that's good. Do I see the context? Yes, I do. And the response is, I already told you my favorite color is color context dot favorite color. So I'm pulling the answer from the context, which was not set in this intent. It was set in the color intent. So let's see how this would work in action. So if the user says to the bot, what is your favorite color? It's going to say, if I read, the user says, tell me again. It's going to say, I already told you my favorite colors of I read. Tell me again. I already told you my favorite colors of I read. Tell me again. Sorry, I didn't get that. Can you rephrase? Why did that happen? It happened because I set a lifespan of two on that context. So after I accessed it two times, it goes away. So when I say tell me again, even though that matched the training phrase of color dot again, the context no longer existed. So it said, sorry, I didn't get that. Can you rephrase? Well, where did sorry, I didn't get that. Can you rephrase come from? That comes from the default fallback intent, which comes with every time you create uh, an agent or a bot. And it comes with, it's basically anytime it doesn't know what to do with something, it's going to go here. And it comes with a whole bunch of built-in answers. Well, you can change those. You can add, you can subtract, you can create your own answers. But this is what happens when some when the bot can't process something. Now, a well-written bot, you rarely see this. So if you create a bot for IT services, you don't want to just fall back into this. You want to have as many answers as you possibly can. Otherwise, people get frustrated with your bot and say, hey, I can't do much with this bot. There's not enough in there. So again, default fallback. There's also a default welcome intent as well. So look at integrations. So integrations, again, how does the user talk to the bot? And how does the user bot talk to the user? Well, Google provides a lot of built-ins like web demo, uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, phone gateway, it does Slack, uh, Twitter, Twilio. Now, sometimes it provides the, uh, the actual work itself sometimes it will go and it will tell you how to do it. So it's more like a step-by-step. -step. And I'll show you that when we get to, a, a, I'll do a Twilio. Mm -hmm. So Google Assistant, notice how it's front and center because they want you to use Google products. Google Assistant runs on your smartphone. Uh, it also runs on your uh, smart speaker, like a Google Home, and I use both. When you set them up, you go in, you follow the little list of, there's a, you walk down a whole bunch of stuff and it asks you to do things, get things ready. And then what you would do just as bot developers for, you know, for your own purposes, you would create an alpha version um, and that allow you to load that bot. And then you can run it from your Google home or you can run it from the test platform or you can run it from Google assistant on your smartphone. As an alpha release, you can also tell it to uh, let other people use your bot as well. And I think you can have up to 20 people. Again, this is where the Gmail address comes in. So you would enter them as alpha users and then um, deploy the bot. And then they could run it on their uh, smart speaker um, or again, Google Assistant. Okay. So Google Assistant comes with its own test tool as well. So it's a little bit different than the generic test tool, but it allows you to um, uh, see how engage, uh, I'm sorry, engage, how the bot would run uh, on Google Assistant. Now, I'm, I'll show you that in just the end, at the very end. Okay, let's talk about APIs. APIs are really important to me. I love things that I can program to. Um, so not only can you build the bot and you can go through these test tools and all that, but what it, let's say that you want to create your own integration that Google doesn't provide. I've done this. I've done this with uh, Avaya CPaaS, and I wanted to use the text messaging capabilities of CPaaS so that I could send a text message to a uh, CPaaS, Avaya Cloud, and then it would send that message down to Google 
Google would send the message back to CPASS and then it would send that message to my, my cell phone. So there's no integration for that. Uh, so I wrote my own. And how did I do that? Well, I used the APIs. And you can either use the SDK uh, if you're a Java programmer like I am, or there's also uh, web services as well. And I'm just showing Postman here. So you can send web services to Google and it let it do the natural language processing and the things with the entities and the context and and then all that kind of stuff. And what you're doing is you're doing the integration. So you're you're creating the integration, not Google, you're creating the integration. So anyway, that is the end of the slides. So let's get out of this and let's go over and let me bring up uh, the bot. So there's my engage bot. Okay. And so you see the, you know, the different things I had in there. And here's that test tool I told you about. So when is engage? <clears throat> Notice how it came back and it gave me the default answer. Uh, it gave me the, um, the intent processing. I can actually click down here. Can I can see the, the actual JSON that's being exchanged here. And we can do the same with the others. Remember I talked about text messages. And text messages uh, used a fulfillment engine. So if I come down here, you can see that the webhook has been enabled. If I go to my fulfillment engine, and you'll see that I used uh, Firebase for this. So I wrote all this code in Node.js. And I'm not going to walk you through it, but I've got a bunch of stuff happening down here. And again, it's going back into this database, uh, the rest, the rest, uh, the NoSQL database. And then the various integrations. And I've talked about, so that I've done Google integration. I've also put this on a, uh, a telephone. So um, if you could dial that number, you will get to my bot for 30 days. This expires after 30 days. Um, and then there are also things like if I want to do um, Twilio, Twilio shows, gives me the instructions how to do that. And the same thing with Facebook Messenger and there are other integrations as well. So let's look at it in Google Assistant though. So they have a really cool test program. So I bring up the test program for Google Assistant. It takes just a moment here for it to get going. And I've already built the bot. I've named it. and I've done all the stuff that you have to do to integrate with Google Assistant. So this can run on my Google Home device or on my smartphone. So let's uh, actually do this. Kick it off. Let's get the test version of Engage Conference. Welcome to the Engage 2020 bot. How may I help you? Where is Engage? Engage 2020 is being held at the Phoenix Convention Center. The address of the center is 100 North 3rd Street, Phoenix, Arizona 85004, United States. When is Engage? Engage begins on February 2nd and wraps up on February 5th. Who won the last World Series? Sorry, could you say that again? Okay, there's the default. I'll see you later. Thank you for using the Engage 2020 bot. I hope to hear from you soon. And notice Engage Conference left the conversation, and that's because the goodbye bot is set as end of conversation. So there you go. Um, this is basic bot building using Google Dialogflow. There's no reason why you can't do this yourself and build a very basic FAQ bot. If you want to get fancy and you know Node.js or you have a web server, you can you know, do lots and stuff with fulfillment. Um, I do things with uh, images uh, as well, so you can send images back. Um, uh, this is a very powerful platform. I gave this presentation to somebody in-house and a couple of days later, he came back and he had a Twilio bot up and running. He followed the instructions for Twilio. So he was using SMS text from Twilio. So he would send in a text message. It would send the message down to the bot. The bot would send the message back to Twilio. And then the Twilio would send off to the user. Very similar to what I did with uh, Avaya CPASS. But he didn't have to go through the integration. So he didn't have to write the Java code to, to make it all happen. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful. And um, if you appreciate it, let me know. Take care now. Bye-bye.